Hello, welcome to another video on your YouTube channel, Tech Talk with Nikit. In this video, we are going to look at all the date related functions along with example. Date functions or date calculations are used a lot whenever you work on any data. So this video will help you to rectify the challenges that you get and get a resolution for them. I will also try to add few tricks beyond these date functions as well. So let's get started. To perform this activity, I am using the orders sample superstore file. And the first calculation which is associated with date that I'll be showing you is today. So I'll double click on today, which will give me today's date. Let's name this calculation as today. I will click on apply and I will click on OK. I'll write this today date over here in this manner. For better viewing, I'll change the font size so that you can easily view it. And now I'm getting year because over here I'm showing year for today. I'll change it and make it to exact date and I'll get the exact date something like this. So that is for today. Let's look at other values. Let's look at date add. So what date add will do, it will add an increment to any given date. This will depend on the kind of date part that you are using along with the interval. So what I will do, I'll use a date add and I'll add one month to today's value. So I'll do a date add something like this. Over here in quotes, I'm gonna put month comma, I'll mention one, and I can use the calculated field for today, or you can directly use the function. I'll go with function like this. My calculation is valid. I will click on apply and click on okay. I'll drag it over here and drop it to text. Again, I'm getting the year. I'll bring in and get the exact date value like this. And you can see one month is added to today's value. Let's look at some more functions. The next one that we have in the list is date diff. Now date diff will give you the difference between the dates that you have. One very common example that goes with date diff, especially with this data source is getting the number of days to deliver a product. You see, we have order date, we have ship date, and if we subtract them, we can get the days to deliver the product. Let's look at that. I'll create a calculated field and call it as days to deliver. And this will be a subtraction or the difference between the ship date and the order date. In this one, I'll be using a day because I want to have number of days it took to deliver the product. Start date, I'll give the order date. As soon as you type, you'll get the suggestions. And the end date I'll give as ship date. Now, whatever is in square bracket, that's optional. For now, I'm not going with that. My calculation is valid. I will click on apply and I will click on OK. I got days to deliver. Now, let's do one thing. Let's drag in the order ID over here. So this is giving me different order IDs that are there and I'll bring in days to deliver like this. Please note, this is sum. I'll make a change and make it to attribute. You will see the values have changed. In case if you want to know how attribute works, I would suggest you go and check the attribute video on the channel. Now, to understand it better, let me bring in the order date and also the ship date so that you can easily do the calculations. I'll click on this downward arrow and make it as an exact date. And yes, I will make it as exact discrete date. So this is how your discrete and continuous values will change as well. I'll convert it into a discrete value, something like this. Click on the downward arrow and make it as discrete. I'll do the same for the year over here. 
and make it as exact date for the ship date it will convert it into a continuous field and i'll change it to a discrete one in this manner now you have your dates with you and now you can identify the calculation which we just did to get the days to deliver the product interesting isn't it let's move on and look at the next one next you have date name which will give you the part of this the string for any given date for this what i will do i will use today's value to get the month for it so i'll call it as this month i'll just double click on date name like this increase it so that you can view it in case if you're wondering how am i increasing the size just press control plus plus and it will work now i'll mention again month over here and i'll take today like this it says my calculation is valid i'll click on apply and click on okay i'll drag this month and bring it to text and i'm getting june because it's 12th of june for me next one so the next thing that we have is date pass so what date pass will do it will convert any string into a date value you can use this example and perform this activity let's look at the next one which is date part now this is a little different than what we just saw when you were looking at the date name this will give you the date part as an integer let me do the same activity this month but in brackets i'll call it as int and over here i'll put date part i'll give in quotes month and yes it will again take today calculation is valid apply and okay i'll drag this value and put it over here in text oh wow i'm getting 559964 that's interesting that is because you're using a sum over here and this is an integer value i'm going to make it to attribute and i'll get 6 6 which is the integer value for june as a month going ahead you have date trunk now this date trunk is very interesting and useful imagine you're working on any data which contain order dates or invoice dates and you want to bring all the values to the first day of the week now you can do that by truncating the values that are there for this what i'll do i'm going to create and i'll name it as week values i'll use date trunk double click on it the requirement for a date trunk is a date part so i can mention over here like week put a comma and the date value that i'll be using for this activity is order date so i'll just type in order and mention order date week value for order date like this now i will click on apply and okay i'll create a new sheet call it as week value for order date i'll bring this up and put it over here to in the text something like this i don't want it for year and along with that what i'll do is i'll bring in order date in this manner i'll make it to exact date like this and i'll change the week value for order date to an exact date like this this time continuous will work but i want to convert it into discrete so that you can have a proper view you're getting this hash because of the space issues so i'll just increase the value and you can see now each of them is showing the first one and if you want to understand it better let's look at the latest value that we have and now if you'll go and check the first value that you see for the last week of 2021 is 26th of december 
it's like this you can use the week value for the order date and now this becomes very useful let's say if i bring it over here like this the same analysis is now at the first day of the week level next we have day which will give you the day but in integer form this date will check whether a date value or a string value is a valid date or not let me show you how you can use it i'll use is date for today and i'll bring in over here is date straightforward and for the value i'll put today like this but here's a little catch it will check for a string value and right now i'm showing a date value that's why i'm getting an error over here is date is being called with a date did you mean string so yes what i'll do i'll make it as string by using the type conversion str and now my calculation is valid and if i'm going to use this it should give me true as output there we go going ahead ISO quarter, ISO week, ISO weekday, and ISO year. So these are ISO 8601 year value for the ISO year value. And that will always start on the first Monday, closest to January 1st. And this means that the year does not start until January, January 4th in some cases, or it may start in late December, in others so that's how you have iso year similarly the iso quarter is the first three quarters in iso 8601 always have 13 weeks in them and with the last quarter they'll have either 13 or 14 depending on the year where you are talking about the month is again does not use the direct month and we'll use it on the basis of the values that are there, depending on the quarter and year. Talking about ISO week, so ISO week will give you week-based calendar, exactly seven days, and it will start from Monday. So like that, you will have the ISO values. Min, max will give you the maximum and the minimum date values. Let me show you. I'll use both of them in a single scenario. I'll use something like this, max. I'll call it as min and max. I'll use the maximum ship date. Plus minimum ship date, like this. I'm getting a small error over here. And it says that can't add date and date values what you can do is you can either remove it like this and you'll still get an error so what i'll do i'll keep this plus and i'll make one of them as i'll make both of them as string because ultimately we want to see how min and max is working something like this and now my calculation is valid so i'll go ahead and click on okay I'll drag this min and max, drop it to text, space. So I'll increase the size and you can see the min and max values that are there. So the first one is talking about the max, which is the maximum date for ship date. And the second one is talking about the minimum. You can add a little more space and make it better. Something like this. I'll just do it for you. Yeah, you have. Something like this. A little too big. And I'll click on OK. And there you go. In this manner, you can do it. OK. After min and max, you have month. That will give you the month for any given date. Again, in form of integer. So if you'll observe, there are a few overlaps over here. like. Your date part will also give you the month value, but you can choose it in this 
condition whether you want month or week whatever you want but month is only specified for month to get the output in form of integer for the month that is there same goes for quarter it will return you the quarter that is there and same for year sorry week and as well as year in this condition just to show you now there's one really, one very interesting thing over here and that is between now and today so the value with today will give you current date whereas the value with now will give you current date and time let me just show it to you so if i do a now go over here and just mention now like this click on apply click on okay and drag this now over here to text in this manner and yes i'll make it as exact and i have the current time as well with me so in this manner we can get the now information as well this becomes very useful at times when you want to show the login time for any user so you can just mention the now you can also bring in today value to identify current date and use it in other calculations one interesting thing which i wanted to show you over here is how you can change the start of the year value because for most of the cases you have january as the first week so first month and uh, when you use january as first month your first quarter becomes january feb and march but what if your organization is using a fiscal year which starts from april or let's say it starts from august in that case if it starts from april your first quarter will be april may june how can you make these changes i'll show it to you i'll just bring in order date over here just to make you understand this i'll bring in quarter and i can drill down to lower levels as well something like this to individual day i'll get rid of this month so you have the quarter and day in fact i'll make this as an exact date and convert it into discrete so that you know which one is quarter one over here but now what if i change the fiscal year values how this will respond to that let's understand that so what i'll do i right click on order date and you'll get change date sorry you will get default properties within that you have an option of fiscal year start i'll call it as my fiscal year starts from let's say april so i'll click on april over here and the moment i do that you can see first of january or third of january in this condition is not quarter 1 that becomes quarter 4 then what becomes a quarter 1 if i scroll down you'll observe that first of april is now my quarter 1 so like this you can change the start of the year as well or the fiscal year values as well i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it if you want to share insights and feedback please mention it in the comment section don't forget to subscribe this till then stay safe and happy learning